Thanks to Hostinger for sponsoring today's video. Now I've made videos before about how to get past Windows passwords, but what happens when you get a computer maybe donated from your company or one that you bought at a pawn shop or picked up on Marketplace that has preloaded company setup information on it from yours or some other company and you can't get past it to get into Windows so that you can use it. In today's video, I'm going to show you exactly how to do that, how to take a computer with preloaded company software or with a preloaded company image and bypass that completely, get into Windows so you can start using your computer. Now the process is not terribly complicated, but it does involve a few steps. The first thing that you're going to need is a Windows installer disk. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly show you how to go get that disk, then we're going to boot to that disk, and then I'm going to show you how to wipe the existing information off the machine and allow you to actually use that computer. So the only thing that you're going to need for this process to work is a flash drive with a minimum of eight gigabytes. If you don't have one, I'll put links in the description. You can click on those and have one delivered to you. Once you have that flash drive in hand, you'll be ready to go. If you already have a flash drive that is empty or doesn't have anything on it that you care about, you can use that too. It just needs to be a minimum of eight gigabytes and you need to be willing to overwrite whatever's on that disk because it will be replaced with the Windows installation. So at this point, I'm going to assume that you already have a flash drive in hand. Go ahead and plug it into the computer first, and then I'm gonna show you how to download the software. So what should happen when you plug your flash drive in is you should see something like this that is different than your normal drives. In this case, it is an empty 32 gigabyte flash drive. Again, you only need eight gigabytes. That's what I'm using to demonstrate this. If for some reason this doesn't pop up, go to the bottom of your screen and click on the manila folder for the file explorer and then under this PC, you'll be able to see the flash drive. Once you see the flash drive, you wanna make note of the drive letter. In this case, it's drive J. Now that'll become important in a second. Some of you may be trying to figure out how to stake your own claim online and start building a following, build your own brand and eventually become your own boss. But then there's that big elephant in the room. How do I do any of that? You need one centralized location where you can not only create and share content from, but you also need something that's gonna allow you to start with zero and eventually scale to millions of customers or followers. If you wanna build an online presence, you need a website. And that's where today's sponsor, Hostinger, comes in. You don't need programming skills. You don't need to learn how to write code. Using the power of AI, they make designing a website super simple. Just describe your website in a few sentences and the AI automatically generates a website for you. And then you can just edit it with their simple drag and drop feature. So as a viewer of this channel, if you go to hostinger.com slash computer guy and use code computer guy at checkout, you're going to get an additional 10% off the already low price. Definitely check out the business plan. There are so many additional features like AI tools and other e-commerce features built in that the basic plan doesn't have. I highly recommend you check out Hostinger. I use it. I love it. I think you will too. So again, go to hostinger.com slash computer guy. Enter code computer guy at checkout for 10% off your annual plan. Now back to your video. Okay. So once you have your flash drive plugged in and you know what drive letter it is, just open your favorite browser and in the search box, type in download media creation tool, windows 10, windows 11, whichever version you have. In my case, it's windows 10. And the very first link here is the one that I'm going to want to go to. Now, if you have, Windows 11, as you can see here, this first link is the one that you're going to want to click on. If you have Windows 8, this is the link that you want to click on when you type this into your search box. But what you need to understand is that there is not a media creation tool for Windows 8. That is a different process. There is a media creation tool still for Windows 10 and Windows 11. In this case, and again, I'm focused on Windows 10. Scroll down on this page right here where it says create Windows 10 installation media. You're going to click download now and then just save it to your downloads folder. Once your file is downloaded, go ahead and run that application. And then you're going to get a pop up on the screen here just saying that it's getting a few things ready. Most of this process is pretty automatic, so you don't have to do a whole lot but I'm just wanting to make sure that you follow the steps all the way through. And again, this is almost identical for the Windows 11 version as well. First notice that comes up, click on accept. Now this next screen is important. You do not want to choose upgrade this PC. You're trying to create a bootable disk for this other computer that you can't get into. So you're going to select the option here to create an installation media and then click next. Now, if these settings are okay, you can go ahead and click next. Now, the next screen that pops up, USB flash drive, should be automatic, but if it's not, make sure you check that. 
Again, make sure it's an eight gig or larger flash drive and then click next. This is where earlier when I told you to pay attention to that drive letter makes a difference. In this case, I want to select that drive that popped up on my screen when I plugged it in. That is the J drive. Make sure you do this correctly because you do not want to overwrite a different drive on your system. J drive is where I want to create this media installer. So I'm going to click J and then next. After that, it'll start creating the disk. Just sit back and wait until it's done. Okay, so it may have taken 15, 20 minutes or so, but it says here the flash drive is ready, so you can just click finish. Now you'll see that same flash drive with a different label on it. And as you can see, there's obviously some data on it. When you click on it, it should look something like this. So that part is done. Actually, that works out really well because this is a utility that every Windows user should have. You can't necessarily count on Windows to always work. And sometimes the only way to fix it is to wipe it and reinstall Windows. This disk will allow you to do that. Now, the next step in the process is simply to put that flash drive into the laptop or desktop PC that you are trying to get into. Any USB port will work. What you want to do when you turn the computer on is choose a different boot device than the one the computer is trying to boot to, which is its primary hard drive. Different manufacturers have different processes and different function keys. You can always go into the BIOS and change your flash drive to the first bootable device, or you can usually hit function keys F1 to F12, depending on your manufacturer. What that will do is that will give you a boot order option, then select your flash drive, and now you can boot to that flash drive. At that point, we can begin to wipe the existing drive and reinstall Windows. Additionally, and not just to reinstall Windows, but this boot disk actually has many more uses. You can use it to change your Windows password or clear it. You can use it to create new accounts. You can do all kinds of stuff with it. So it's absolutely Absolutely worth having. So I've got the flash drive plugged into a USB port. I've started the computer on this IBM ThinkPad. It's F12 to get to that boot order menu. At that point, it will allow me to select that flash drive and then hit enter to continue. And it will load that media creation tool that we just made. Now, the first screen that's going to come up is your typical Windows installation screen. You're going to click next at this point, and then you're going to have the option to install now or repair your computer. Now, again, if you cannot get into this computer because it's locked with a company image or something like that, and you just want to wipe it completely, you're going to want to choose install. Now the next screen that comes up, you're going to accept the license terms and then click next. The next screen is going to come up and ask you what kind of installation do you want to do upgrade or the second option, which is a custom windows install. We want to choose custom. Basically what you want to do is you want to wipe all the partitions off this drive including the recovery partition, because in this example, the recovery partition is a factory image for this company that was made by ThinkPad specifically for that company. It won't let me do any other kind of Windows install unless I do it clean. But once I delete those partitions, I will be able to install Windows clean and everything will work. So what you're going to want to do is just literally click on each partition and then select delete. You're going to get a message saying the partition might contain important files, blah, blah, blah. Just go ahead and say yes. Okay. And then single click the next partition and then click delete. Repeat that for all the partitions that are on this disk, including the recovery partition. When you're done, you should have one partition. Usually we'll say drive zero unallocated space. At that point, click next. And now Windows is going to start installing and all you have to do is sit back and wait. At this point, it's going to prompt you to restart. You can either manually restart or just let the system do it, but it's going to go ahead and restart the computer and then it's going to go through the initial Windows setup. Okay, so the next step in the process is to start with your region, which in my case is United States. Go ahead and click yes. Go ahead and select yes on the keyboard layout, skip on the secondary layout, and then it wants to prompt me to connect to a network. Now, if I connect to my wireless network, it will by default want me to connect to a Microsoft account. Depending on the version of Windows you have, you may have the option at the bottom left to say, I don't have internet. If you do, I would recommend that you select that because that will allow you to create a local account and not have to use a Microsoft account. If you would prefer to use a Microsoft account, go ahead and connect to your network. If you have a laptop, you're probably connecting to wireless. If you have a desktop machine and you're connected through an ethernet or wired cable and you want a local account versus a Microsoft account, go ahead and pull that cable restart the computer. It's going to go through the setup process again, just a few minutes. It's not going to go through the whole thing, just the initial setup. 
And at that point, you won't have internet access and you should have that option to say, I don't have internet. Again, if you want a Microsoft account, then don't worry about it. Stay connected and continue on. I did make a video a while back about a local account versus a Microsoft account. I'll put that link right up here for you if you want to check it out. Might be worth watching. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and say, I don't have internet. The next screen that comes up at the bottom left corner of your screen, you're going to see continue with limited setup. I'm going to go ahead and click that. And basically what that does is it just allows you to create that local account. The next screen that comes up says, who's going to use this PC? Type in whatever name you want. Owner, user, your personal name, whatever you want. That's what you're going to create for your local account. And I'm going to click next. Now the next screen that pops up asks for a password. Just ignore that or put a password in. But if you don't need a password, then why put one in? Click next and off you go. Your next screen comes up. It's going to ask you about privacy settings. I'm not going to go through that right now because really all I want to do is just get into Windows. I can change these later. So I'm just going to click accept and I'll get prompted about Cortana. I'm going to say not now because I think there's maybe five or six people on the planet who still use it. And at this point, Windows is off and running. A few minutes from now, it's going to go ahead and set everything up. And then I'll get back to my Windows desktop, at which point I should be able to to show you what's on the screen. Well, for whatever reason, my capture card decided not to play nice, but there we go. In Windows, no trace of the company stuff that was on it before. The recovery partition is gone, which means you have a clean Windows install that you can start using today. So at this point, all I have to do is connect it to the internet, let it activate, let Windows update, install my drivers, and the system is 100% good to go. So don't think for a second because you picked up a used machine at a pawn shop or off a marketplace or your company gave it to you that you can't use that media creation tool and get into Windows. So congratulations if you made it this far. You got a working Windows computer again. And now that you have the media creation tool, that's fantastic for reinstalling Windows. But there's a bunch of other things that you can do with it to troubleshoot Windows if and when you have that problem. Click on this video right here and I'm going to walk you through all of them. As always, thanks so much for watching.